Hi guys, it's Mr. White. Today we're going to be learning about mitosis, the major form of cellular division. Um, the learning objectives for today include learning how chromosomes and DNA are connected to each other, and the difference between the terms haploid and diploid, and what is the general purpose of mitosis and the results that come from mitosis. Now, there should be some other videos that I've um, put in the same playlist that show you the, an actual animation or two of mitosis in progress. Um, make sure you watch those as well. I also have a link right here, which shows uh, a couple of good step-by-step -step animations at this site using this URL. Um, I'll try to link that into the description below, so by all means, check the description down below and find this link and click on it to watch mitosis and work because all I have on these video lectures is uh, pictures and pictures don't move of course. So the connection between DNA and chromosomes should be fairly obvious to you by this point. Uh, it should have been explained to you in seventh grade but if not here it is. You have DNA right here with the base pairs which we'll talk about when we hit genetics of A's and T's and G's and C's and DNA itself is really, really thin. Um, it's so thin, it's almost impossible to see it with the naked eye. You almost have to use a microscope to see it. And because it's so thin and because it's so long, the only way you can actually really see DNA under a microscope is when it's coiled together, when it's packed together. And the way they coils is it actually coils around these things called histone proteins. They look like little basketballs or volleyballs. Um, and as they coil around, they get tighter and tighter and tighter, and they keep wrapping again and again on themselves. And you can see the histones start wrapping on themselves to the point where they make these longer coils, and eventually they form these shapes, which we call chromosomes. And chromosomes only appear in a nucleus of a cell just before the cell is about to divide. So most of the time, you cannot see the DNA in chromosome form. Most of the time the DNA is just out in chromatin form. It just looks like a, uh, a cell. This is the cell and then the nucleus and then the nucleus is just this dark spot and all that darkness is in the nucleus is all the DNA and some ribosomes mixed in um, just taking up as much space as possible. But when it comes time to divide the cell into two cells the DNA has to be packed up to be moved easier because otherwise it would take too long to stretch the DNA out. Each one of these chromosomes is about six feet in length when you actually, if you would actually unspill it. And again, these things are really thin, but they're really long. That's how much DNA there is in one of these chromosomes. So this is a very good um, <clears throat> set of uh, electronic enhanced uh, images of cell undergoing mitosis. Mitosis has several different uh, stages or phases uh, starting up here this is the interphase which we'll talk about prophase prometaphase and metaphase anaphase and then telophase and you can see at first you don't really see any chromosomes and then by prophase the DNA is being wound together to where you can start to make out some of the shapes here in the prometaphase you can see the spindle fibers centrioles centromeres up here and then by metaphase, they're lined up and they're about to be pulled apart because you're going to get two new cells here and here when this whole process is done. So you have to duplicate the DNA and then you have to pull the DNA apart from itself so that each new cell has its own set of DNA. So the basic purpose of mitosis, well, it's how your body grows. It's how you go from being a one-celled individual, um, a combination of sperm and egg, all the way to the zillion celled individual that you are now. So it's how your body grows, but it's also how your body repairs itself. So anytime you get a cut or any type of injury and new cells have to be made, mitosis is the process that does that. So it's where cells divide to make two complete daughter cells. They're just called daughter cells. Sorry, there's no real gender implied with this. They're just called daughter cells. The original parent cell no longer technically exists. It's been divided into two younger, smaller cells to start with. The mitos mitosis actually occurs in a very specific pattern of phases. Uh, this is part of what's known as the cell cycle, and I'll show you some pictures of the cell cycle. And it never, ever goes out of this pattern unless something is wrong with the cell. So 
if something is wrong with the cell, then you can have issues where the cell doesn't divide properly and maybe the cell doesn't survive. But for healthy cells, the pattern is always the same. This is the basic stages for the cell cycle, not mitosis, but the whole cell cycle in order. And I've color coded this because <clears throat> the actual stages of the cell cycle have larger names. There's interphase, the mitosis stage, the emphase, and then cytokinesis. And then because this is a cycle, it repeats itself. It goes in a uh, cylindrical system. So you get interphase, mitosis, cytokinesis, interphase, mitosis, cytokinesis, interphase, mitosis, cytokinesis. And so what I'm actually showing you on the left-hand side is just what you would see if I took the mitosis part and showed you the different stages of mitosis. So that's how I color-coded this because all these black labels go back to being part of mitosis, but they are in order. So that's mitosis. Interphase and cytokinesis, keep in mind, they occur with the cell cycle, but they are not part of mitosis. So mitosis is only prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And we're going to be learning a little um, <clears throat> excuse me, mnemonic here to help you remember. It's I prefer milk and tea cold. I, interphase, prefer, P, prophase, milk, meta, metaphase, and anaphase, T, telophase, cold, cytokinesis. So I, interphase, C, cytokinesis, remember not part of mitosis, but for the whole cell cycle, I prefer milk and tea cold is a nice, simple way to remember everything. So here's a picture of mitosis in action. <clears throat> Again, here's interphase. This is actually more part of the cell cycle, and then mitosis actually starts here at prophase. And this is where the chromosomes are becoming visible. The nuclear membrane is going to disappear. And then by the time it moves on to metaphase, you can see the chromosomes have already duplicated. Everything's lined up. And there's these fibers. These are called spindle fibers that are attached to them. And um, they also have anchor points at the opposite ends of the cells. And they're going to be what pull the actual uh, chromosomes apart from each other, which you can see here in anaphase, they're being pulled apart. Then by telophase, you actually see the chromosomes are forming two new nuclei, and with cytokinesis, you get the rest of the organelles, the rest of the cytoplasm starting to finally divide and to form the two new daughter cells. Notice, uh, and we'll talk more about this, that there's actually going to be the same number of chromosomes in both cells, even though um, they are technically two new cells. So the number of chromosomes is the same from parent to daughter cells. So this is a picture that's from your textbook. This shows the cell cycle. I'm sorry I didn't label that. Let me do that now. Cell cycle. And it's a decent picture. I like it. It shows you the relative size of things because here this white arrow is interphase. So this whole time for the cell's lifespan, it's mostly an interphase. And interphase is broken up into other phases called the G phase, the S phase, and the G2 phase. And it gives you a basic idea in this picture of what's going on. The G1 phase is where the cell is growing after it's first been divided. The S phase is where you have DNA replication. S stands for synthesis, so DNA is duplicating itself. And the G2 phase is mostly in preparation for undergoing cell division. And so if you're talking about a liver cell, most of the time when it's doing what it should be doing happens in interphase during G1 and in some cases the S phase. Then you see here on the left, you have what's known as the M phase. M stands for mitosis. And then again, you have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase and then cytokinesis. Again, cytokinesis is not technically part of mitosis, but it does get included as one of the steps of cell division. This picture I kind of like better, and so if you were to copy either one of these these pictures down, this one or the previous one, I'd say go with this one. It's the very same thing. The only thing I don't like about this picture is they don't have the labels here for mitosis. I kind of like the other picture for that. So. If you want, copy this picture, but put in these labels for prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then cytokinesis as well. Um, and again, it tells you that this section here is interphase, the longest section, and then here's the M phase, 
for, mit for mitosis. And it tells you that the G1 phase, the cellular context, excluding the chromosomes, are duplicated. So all the organelles get duplicated. Everything gets doubled in size. And then by the S phase, each of the 46 chromosomes is duplicated. In other words, all the DNA gets copied. And the G2 phase, the cell, quote, double checks, makes sure everything is ready, uh, nothing, there's no errors in itself before it decides to duplicate. So you start with one cell down here for the G1 phase, you double the DNA, gets, prepared, gets everything set up, and by the end you get two cells with the same number of chromosomes at the end of the process. So back to my little mnemonic. I prefer milk and tea cold. Again, a reminder, I interphase, prefer P prophase, milk and tea cold, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis. Again, remembering that interphase and cytokinesis are not technically mitosis. They are part of the cell cycle, though, so it's good to know them. So I prefer milk and tea cold, and then the process repeats itself. So in mitosis, as I said, the cells are dividing to make more cells within the organism. This is how your body grows to adulthood and how your body repairs itself from injuries. And so you start off with one parent cell, and the symbol that biologists like to use is this. It's called 2N, and sometimes you'll see it with lowercase, and sometimes you see it with uppercase. There's no real set convention on it. Um, this means diploid. And what that means is whatever number of chromosomes the parent cell has, it's a full set. So it could be a number like, it's got to be an even number, so it could be a number like, well, in humans, it's 46. And that would mean that in the daughter cells, they too are diploid. So each daughter cell also gets 46 chromosomes. And this is important in contrast to another type of cell division we'll go into much more depth on later called meiosis, which is slightly different. Because in meiosis, you don't get the same number of chromosomes from the parent to the daughter cells. Again, <clears throat> here's another static picture of uh, mitosis. But again, to emphasize the idea of diploid, Here's 2N, so in this case it's just two chromosomes, one, two, and by the end, both daughters have one, two chromosomes, one, two. And so <clears throat> it's a key part of mitosis that you get two new cells from one, and that each cell has the same number of chromosomes as the original parent cell. That's how you know this is mitosis. Two cells from one, and the chromosome number does not change. They're both what we call diploid, di meaning two. Diploid. I think this is very close to a picture that's in your book on showing mitosis. The only difference is they actually show a what they call a pro-metaphase step, which is kind of halfway between prophase and, and metaphase. That's why it's called pro-metaphase. And they kind of merge together telophase and cytokinesis which they really shouldn't do because, as I said, cytokinesis is not part of mitosis. But for the sake of simplicity, it works for the picture. Again, in interphase, you can't see the chromosomes. Everything's uncoiled. By prophase, you can. And then the nuclear envelope starts to break down in late prophase. And then by the metaphase, true metaphase down here, you can see all the chromosomes are lined up along what's called the equatorial plate. And then by anaphase, the chromosomes are being pulled apart towards opposite ends of the cell. And then by telophase, you start to see the formation of new nuclear envelopes and everything else gets divided up during cytokinesis. Now I'm going to do a very quick contrast because uh, we're going to cover this much later on after you guys come back from winter break of mitosis to meiosis because meiosis is also a type of cell division, but that's how your body makes gametes. Now gametes are the sex cells, sperm or egg. And it's a type of cell division, but it works in a vastly different way. Where you have one parent cell that's diploid, so in the case of humans that would be 46 chromosomes. But instead of getting one, or getting two cells, excuse me, you get four new daughter cells, each of which are only half the number of chromosomes. So again, in the case of humans, if you do half of 46, each of the sperm or egg only has 23 chromosomes. So diploid, the symbol is 2N, or again, sometimes it's 2 capital N. In humans, and this is just with humans, you have 46 chromosomes in regular human cells. Again, that's your skin cells, your eye cells, your hair cells. Every cell in your body has 46 chromosomes 
except for the gametes, the sperm or the egg cells. Those are all haploid, or 1N, or in the case of humans, 23 chromosomes. And keep in mind, different species have different numbers of chromosomes, but the diploid has to be an even number, the haploid has to be an odd number, or not an odd number, but has to add up to the even number. Excuse me. So mitosis, remember, is used for growth and repair, whereas meiosis, in contrast, is used primarily as a method towards reproduction to produce the sperm and egg cells, what we call the gametes. So that wraps up the lecture on mitosis, guys. It's a really short lecture. Like I said, check out the description and the additional videos in this playlist to see the actual process of mitosis in action. And keep in mind um, that, again, mitosis used for growth, repair. You get one parent cell dividing into two daughter cells, one, two, and each time they are both diploid. They have the same number of chromosomes at the beginning and at the end.